France has always been one of the most well-known stages in Europe for human innovation and invention, and for art and technology to come together. In one way or another, at least from one own perspective, architecture was and has always been the marriage of the two. However, the nation went through a big transition after the war. With a burden on its shoulder, France was pressured to rebuild itself. Things may have started with brick and mortar. However, there was a man that showed us a desire to renew with something else. A guideline, a principle, an idea of organizing those bricks and mortar in order to rebuild his country, not only fast, but also improved and well-functioned. A modern France. And today we will talk specifically about three aspects of this particular principle. The principle itself, its origin and our understanding of the idea. The application, when we talk about how Le Corbusier utilized the, and executed his own idea into his projects, specifically in architecture. The influence, effects of the modular principle and Le Corbusier influence in general after World War II. Le Corbusier was on the search for a universal code, a blueprint to rebuild France. And the way that he chose to do so was to look into the past. Golden Ratio stood out as the perfect use of geometric driven principle to design and build infrastructure and execute man-man construction for a long period of time in which he asked for consulting from an art historian named Elisa Millard, also an expert in Golden Ratio study. Despite the inspiration and preoccupation of studying proportions since 1910 in Germany, Corbusier faced multiple criticisms, mostly from other architects, such as his biggest rival, Andrew Legault. On one Friday of September 1951, Le Corbusier addressed the first international conference on proportions in the arts at the Milan Triennale by introducing the system of proportional measurements. In 1952, the volume entitled Le Modular came out. The term was composed by the fusion of the notion of module with the notion of the golden section proposed with the analogy with music, which is something he's quite familiar with. One of the most important chapters in his life was meeting with Ozefant. Ozefant introduced Corbusier with what he called regulating lines, or the proportional grid used in a design building. Shortly after, the Committee for Standards of the Order of Architects issued the norm regarding modulation, which was made public in 1942, establishing a module of centimeters. This was the first step towards module thinking and organization, normalization, and standardization. In 1943, Le Corp created Ascoral an organization for normalization and construction which involved some of the intellectuals working under the German occupation. Alexis Carrel was one of them. Carrel's imprint can be perceived when Le Corp mentioned in Le Modular the ancient measurements related to the human body. When he evoked the tools used by Egyptians, Chaldean and Greek builders, they were eternal and enduring, precious because they were linked to a human person. The names of these tools were elbow, cubit, finger, digit, thumb, inch, foot, pace, and so forth. Let us say it at once, they form an integral part of the human body, and for that reason, they were fit to serve as measures for the huts, the houses, and the temples that had been built. Completed in 1952, the building took Le Corbusier's most famous quote that a house is a machine for living in and applied it to the entire community. 
The result was a self-contained concrete vessel that is structured like an ocean liner. Le Corbusier believed that the tower block was the solution for rehousing the masses that had been displaced during the Second World War, and the high-rise buildings could be used to create spacious city homes with the same amenities as a typical street. The building is lifted in pilates, providing space for parking underneath. Inside, corridors run through the center of the long axis of every third floor of the building, with each apartment lying on two levels and stretching from one side of the building to the other with a balcony. It provides communal spaces in the sixth and seventh floor where stores are found, and it also has a roof garden that is designed to be used by the community. Made for men, it is made to human scale, he stated. Therefore, his modular system is not only found in the elevations, but is constantly applied throughout the project. Meaningful and exciting as it was, the idea that one can get guaranteed results from this principle is very outdated, especially when dealing with the visual and aesthetic side of design today. Design is an active, dynamic, and challengeable discipline, and that should be the only infinite discipline. Every aspect is required to be taken on its own term, not just the geometrically relationship itself. This does not mean that there is no ground rules or every problem stays dependent from one another. And this is where Le Modular came into play. It was an attempt to lay down initial ground rules about proportion of space and surrounding elements. At the same time, using your eye, visual and delights as the companion to make decisions. It is important to notice that when one wants to use the modular or any proportional system is to understand that it can only ever be starting point for further design and refinement. The difficult part of the question is the relationship between a single space and a large space or adjacent space. The modular was never intended to bridge this gap in proportion. The world, however, is more complex as it will always be a dense mix of uses, systems, spaces, history, and experiences.